Welcome to Blueprint OT. In this video, we will take a look on the Darlington pair or Darlington circuit. While we're seeing here a standard BJT transistor, so bipolar junction transistor, a Darlington transistor is actually a little bit different. A normal transistor has a signal connected to the base and a gain, which is basically amplifying the signal towards the collector emitter. While this is true for a standard transistor, a Darlington transistor is aiming for higher amplification for a higher gain. The Darlington transistor itself is actually not one transistor, it's basically two transistors chained together. So in order to achieve a higher amplification, it's basically utilizing the gain of the first and the second transistor combined. But let's take a closer look how this will look in a circuit. So first of all we connect the transistors to ground, then we connect them both together, so both collectors are connected to each other. And ultimately, we obviously need some kind of load that we're going to turn on and off. Let's say this is a normal load resistive load, and this is connected to VCC to the power supply. While it is true that you can have a big resistive load, much more of a headache will be any kind of inductive load. So let's imagine a motor that's spinning a fan, running a pump or whatsoever that is basically putting a very high load on your switch in the moment you turn it on. And please bear in mind, even in case you plan to switch your big load using a relay, you still have to turn on and off the relay itself, which is in itself again an inductive load. So in case you're planning to connect your microcontroller like ESP, Arduino or even a microcomputer like the Raspberry Pi directly to a relay, this will work, but obviously it's kind of a heavy load, a heavy wear down on your GPIO pin that will sooner or later deteriorate your GPIO pin. So in order to protect your GPIO pin, you can use a Darlington pair like this to switch the relay or the load directly using the Darlington pair between the GPIO and the load. But coming back to the gain, let's find out how to determine what's the exact gain of a Darlington transistor. So as mentioned before, we're chaining two transistors together. So a Darlington pair can be bought as one component or built by yourself by simply chaining together two transistors as displayed here in the circuit. This means for your gain, you're having the gain of the first transistor and you're having the gain of the second transistor, which is basically amplifying the already amplified current by the first transistor. All of this results in a total gain which consists of the gain of the first transistor multiplied by the gain of the second transistor. Assuming you have a gain of 100 of each transistor, you will end up with a total gain of 10,000. In case you're interested in all the details, how the currents add up and so on, make sure to be subscribed and wait for the advanced video where we will go into the details. While all this sounds great, there are two minor downsides. First of all, by chaining those two transistors together, we have an increased response time. This is simply due to the fact that we have the first transistor needing to turn off and on before the other transistor can turn off and on. There are some countermeasures adding some resistors but I don't want to get too far into the details. The second downside is the increased voltage gap which is basically two times UBE. So two times the normal voltage drop of a resistor. So while a normal transistor has a voltage drop of around 0.6 volts in case it's a silicon transistor. We do have this very same voltage drop, but for each transistor. And as you remember, we are running our currents through the first and the second transistor. So the total voltage drop is twice as high as normally. This can lead to increased heat emissions and also simply has to be accounted for in your total circuit design. Those are all the basics of the Darlington pair already. So let's take another look on the application of the Darlington pair in the next video where we will go into the lab and see how to wire a standard Darlington pair transistor. Thanks for watching so far. Make sure to be subscribed to not miss on those further videos about Darlington transistors and experiments in the lab. In the meantime, thanks again and see you next time.